Hope everybody is having a good week. I just wanted to come on and, and talk about some, some console Overwatch. Pop in your tart put out a very interesting tweet earlier today. And it uh, it really got my brain racking. Man, I thought it warranted a full discussion because this is something that, that affects all of us here in the console scene. And I think this is absolutely a million dollar question. And it, it really just revolves around... Here, I didn't have a screen set up for this, so it's a little scuffed, but you get the point. In your honest opinion, why is the console scene seen as a joke, considered a joke, and how could everyone as a whole change the console scene reputation? Absolute million-dollar question right there. Um, and, and, I, and I think this, this goes down to a lot of different things. See, so might might get some people in here from uh, from the scene to discuss this with me. I know some people from the console stream team definitely uh, had some opinions on this and wanted to pipe in. Give me just a moment. We're gonna get this set up here. Trying to get a Discord set up. All right, I think we're going to get uh, Knight Rider and perhaps Chef Billy in here, pipe in here on this topic. Desaro, hello. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I appreciate you stopping by. I feel like this is this is an important topic and concerns and concerns all of us. And by all means, any any input is definitely welcome. All right, all right, all right. Here, I think uh, we're going to have to change up our strategy here a little bit. We're just going to use an Xbox Live party here to communicate with our friends. Discord being a little wonky. Do, 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 do. I think this question has definitely has multiple facets to it as far as things that can be done from a tournament organization side of things, uh, things that could be done from a player standpoint, and then from a production standpoint where I'm coming from here. Bear with me one second, friends. All right. Hey, Angry. Thanks for popping by, my friend. Do, 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 do. Recording through multiple devices here. Pardon the interruption. But I want to get him in here before we get talking. And about that question, I think it can be solved, but everyone need to come together as one. I think that's absolutely true. No, no, no. This is something that's going to take effort from everybody's part, um, from all facets of our community. And But I think it's something that could really I mean, really elevate us as a whole. And it's it's things that have, have already started to happen, it's things that have been happening. Um, and it is kind of a slow burn process. You know, it's not it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I mean, that, that goes without saying. Thank you. 
Billy! Billy, welcome to the Fork. stream. Fork. <laughs> yes. I, I saw I saw you put it out there and I'm just like, okay. I would like to uh weigh in on this, so Yeah, no, this is an important topic. I actually I'm just kind of been doing some intros, but I've been holding off on getting into the nitty gritty until we could get you all in here. Sorry it's taking me a moment. Oh, it's no problem. I got a little while. I got a little bit uh, I can be here for. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't practice. I wasn't sure how long I was going to stream. I thought this topic just warranted uh, a real discussion more than just a couple tweets. Um, right. This is absolutely a million dollar question here. You know, I, is he. It was popping your heart to put it out there, and and I was reading tweets, and uh, you and I follow a lot of the same people in the CGL Overwatch scene. Being casters that we are, we 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 have such a large reach that, um, you and I both get to, um, we have an interesting know, perspective. We do. Um, I I play on a team, obviously, in the CGL, so I also have that added dynamic. I, I'm I'm a, I'm a captain, so I also have you know that little extra bit of dynamic and i'm on the staff see um, I, I, I i'm basically just a translator and like a general staff person like when they need help with stuff and stuff like that but you know if i think about it and i'm gonna actually turn down my my game volume because i had it way up for some reason um you know reading what xeno uh formerly of darkness tier three or tier two tier three tier three um wrote in a very lengthy response to to what pop in your tart put out there um he actually he actually joined the server that i was in i actually had to i had to reach out to him and say you know what i really enjoyed your take um, who, who is on this it. it was Zeno, uh Zeno parker from formerly of darkness he actually left darkness yesterday Okay. Um, I'm not seeing that reply, honestly, but, or, unless it's under a different um, Twitter name. Uh, do, 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 oh, let me get could, into my Twitter and I'll... Uh, it could be under like a I retweet shall... comment or something of that sort as well. I just have and the maybe... original I just have the original pulled up myself. Although it's... Like, I have a reply that I put in here. It's not showing up on my page right now either, so I don't know. Maybe Twitter's just acting mm. funny. Um, pop in... Um, but one of the things I was, I was starting to get into before you hopped into the call here is I think this is something that is, is really threefold, right? You're talking about coming from the point of view of a tournament organizer and how these tournaments are put together um, and, you know, the vetting process of teams that are brought in and how, I mean, just frankly, how well organized they are. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. very drastically here in the off season. Um, and then you have the, the player standpoint, which is the players themselves taking matches seriously, treating each other with respect. I mean, there's a whole myriad of issues that can go into that that I, I wouldn't, I would love to delve into. Um, but just coming at it from the players themselves, and then from a production standpoint, um, things that we can do on production side as um, as the teams bringing you the action and telling the stories, how we can up our game and and really bridge that gap between what we're doing and PC Open Division. Right, and you know, I, I'm I'm looking. I can see. I can actually see your responses now, but I'm not, not seeing Zeno's in here, um, because I, I found that his um, his uh, his take on it, it was like five. It was like five pair or five. Uh, I guess tweets long. Hi, Chris. Um, not Ryder. Welcome to this. Welcome to the stream. Thanks, bud. Um, uh... This is a this is a really freaking awesome. This is an amazing I, I, this is an amazing I, tweet, and I didn't want it to go unnoticed. I, like I, uh, not ready to catch up a little bit. I was, I was saying I think this just this concept really warrants a full on discussion and really tearing apart the details on this. And that uh, approaching it from a you know three points of view, you have the player's point of view, the tournament organized point of view, and then production. And that all three, I think, have individual things we can do to elevate us and to, to get rid of this stigma that, that we're just a bunch of, as Hex put it, 13-year-olds locked into a cabin. <laughs> I mean, 
I, I think that's a bit. I think that's a bit harsh. Um, you yeah. know, because we th- there's a lot of us that really, really take this very seriously, and, and you know, we put, especially on the production side, that all three of us are. Yeah. You know, with with with, with Ryder putting together the, the the console stream team um, as a place for us to market our wares and hone our craft. You know, we uh, we know I you know how professionally I take this. I know how professionally that that. that writer runs it um you know that's my biggest thing is just like come on man i mean i think that this this needs to be addressed i think that we we are better than you know a a bunch of prepubescent or 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 pubescent teenagers locked in a cabin trying to fight over who gets the controller i I think we're way beyond that so let's let's break this question apart um the the very first and most pertinent essay is why. Why is the console scene see as a, why is the scene seen as a joke? Um, let's start there before we can get into solving the problem. We have to identify the problem. So, what in you guys' opinion? What what do you think are some of the biggest hurdles in this? What are some of the reasons that we aren't taking it as seriously as we'd like to be? Um. So. As in any game, you have toxicity, and I think console players show that a lot more than PC players. Yeah, just a little bit more um, rampant toxicity. Yeah, um, I think it's because console players are trying to catch up to PC players. Um, PC players are held like um, at a higher standard than uh console players so console players are like trying to act like the big dogs and everything like that they're trying to pretty much you know gain that ground that pc players have on you know us um but wouldn't that lead to to more um professionalism and less toxicity i would i would in my from my point of view it seems like you know if we're trying to bridge that gap we're trying to to overcome a deficit that the PC players don't even have, it seems like that would so inspire here, more professionalism is, and, and really leveling up the game, as how, opposed to the other way the around. What's the average age for a pro OWL player? I mean, I'd say 19. So you're going to tell a bunch of 19-year-olds, hey, uh, I know you're fresh out of high school and all, but uh, hey, you guys got to be mature. It's not going to happen. I've been there. I've been. I, I was 19 once. I know how it is. Well, and uh, we're not talking. Difficult. Right, but that's. I think that's something that bridges both. You know, we're talking about what's what's exclusive to the console scene. I mean, there's definitely plenty of toxic people. I mean, even in Owl itself, not to mention just the PC community. Um, yeah. I mean, Sinatra's legendary, you know, reform story. You know, last year, I mean, really 20, 2018. I mean, he was one of the most toxic people in the community. So I'd, but nevertheless, PC is still, still seen as that higher echelon. Yeah, I also think that a lot of it has to do with uh, PC players always are putting down console players. Like, oh, you guys need aim assist to uh, keep up with us, you know? Right, right. The old twiddle and... the sticks. Yeah. So. I, I think, you know, that has a lot to do with it is that, hey, well, we can, you know, I've always thought of PC players. Um, the, you guys are, they, they are point and click type of people. Um, and uh, that's pretty much, you know, well, okay. all I see is they, they point and click where we have, you know, we don't really have that luxury. We have to, you know, move uh, several joysticks and everything like that. And our, our keyboard's literally in our hand. You know, there's not much we can do about that. Well, and th- so that's that's an issue of you know you you know controllers was definitely one of the one word replies in that. I mean, just simply in the fact that they use MNK and we use controllers. But is that? I mean, I, uh, <sighs> I, I does that de-elevate our entire scene just because we don't use a mouse? I mean, does that mean? Does just... I think it makes I think it elevates it. If yeah, you're, if you're, I we're mean, really being league. honest. I think it elevates it. I mean, what if we made a yeah. mouse and keyboard league on console? Would we suddenly become recognized? You see, Probably. then they're like, "Oh, well, you need mouse and keyboard to play on console." You blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if we it... went full if we went full PC uh, with CGL, would it be able to stand up to Path to Pro? Would it be able to stand up to yeah. contenders? 
that's what you have to look at there from a marketing business standpoint is that's where you know are you infringing upon their uh their exclusive identity their exclusive product that they have right now and i think that's that that's a big difference between cgl and and you know because we are a console i mean it's in our name it's console gaming league and we do ps4 we do switch we do um you know i i man i i i'm looking at xeno i finally found his uh i finally found his his tweet responses here um you know, and, and Zeno has been around for a long time. Uh, Ryder, I know that you've had interactions with Zeno from Dark, yep. formerly of formerly of Darkness. Now, uh, if you didn't know that, popping that on the podcast or stream here right now, uh, he is a free agent. Um, so I'm looking at it, and he says, you know, the console scene is seen as a joke for many reasons. He says people aren't playing in the tier they should be. It's literally everywhere. You're not trying to get better. You're just beating down on shitters compared to you. Uh, his second point, uh, for some reason, some good players accept that they are not going to swap to PC to try and make it in the game, so they try and play at as low of a level possible to have fun and or get easy prize pool money. People have egos for winning again when they're higher. <laughs> uh, so well, this, I mean, these are all mean... things coming from a player player perspective. This is coming from, I mean, a captain. I mean, somebody that's been with CGL since CGL became CGL. Right, but when, you know, in, in my intro talking about, you know, I feel like we're kind of broken down into three different perspectives here is tournament organizer, production, and players. So that's that's sure. definitely stuff that's coming from the, the what players can do. Uh, although, you know, the smurfing thing, um, I mean, may hit a little close to home here, but it's clearly an, an issue across console in general. And I, I mean, part of that is just the ease of, of which you can make as many accounts as you want. So right. there's part of that that is just out of our hands entirely as a scene. His biggest point right here, and it's a, he put five points in there. Yeah, no, um, keep it going. These are good. Um, his fourth one, he puts, the one and only somewhat professionally ran league doesn't take enough risks with suspending, banning, forcing a club up tier. It's clearly people shouldn't be in a tier and are just beating down the oppo opposition. When players somehow climb hundreds of SR magically, maybe even to a peak they've been before, right after the season where their SR matters, they don't deserve to be in the lower tier. And uh, tournaments should use career peaks to decide to decide players' shit. People that, don't magically get way worse at Overwatch. That's an interesting. That's an interesting concept. I like I that take. Using career peaks for your tiers. Mm hmm. It's an interesting concept. Yeah, I like it. I think it's absolutely right because and, and Ryder was in a conundrum with me. And, and if, if we're, if we're going to use personal data here, um, I came to D9 as a gold player, but I had peaked in season 18 at 2863, which, according to CGL, uh, is tier two. So he gave me a chance at playing his on his team. Uh, uh, and, I mean, and not only that, team. but my career, my career high is uh... 3150 i mean like at that point you know that that brings the average way up me yeah any team, yeah you know regardless of me sandbagging or not which you know that's that happened i'm i'm you know i fully accept I'm still that so, i'm still so fucking proud that you actually owned up to it and didn't try to pussyfoot around it i'm sorry we're getting a little bit off topic but man i was so fucking proud of you when you did that you're just like yeah i did it i'm gonna take my ban yeah. and i'll see you guys in six months no qualms, no, no, no. Oh, get my ban undone. Oh, ping, 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 ping. Give me attention. No, he's like, I did it. Okay, I fucked up. I made a bad mistake. I'm done. Okay, I'll see you in six months. Well, let's not get let's not get derailed too much here. But I think you do bring up an interesting point. I mean, because part of that is also player behavior, and acknowledging that this stuff is there for a reason and that these things are there to elevate these rules are there to elevate the whole scene and in an attempt to try to do exactly what we're talking about um so so with that said how much i mean how much can we control that who's who is in who is in the position of power to help reduce smurfing like what is what is the response to that like that's such a tough i'm not asking for a magical answer like that's just such a tough thing to approach 
Um, well, I, I think it, I think it starts uh, if I if I put and 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 Ryder was also uh, staff. Um, I, I think that it honestly starts um, with the Overwatch leads, and it works its way down from there. And and you know Nips and and, and all them, you know, they, they they're they're focusing a lot on on the uh, yeah. Fighting games, and I mean, they started as an Overwatch thing, okay? They need to honor the, the, the Overwatch. That's my personal thought. And, you know, they need to they need to really address this, that they they, they have a massive problem of smurfing on their hands and, and just shoveling it onto the side. Or if you're buddies or buddy, buddy org with the person um, that, that you're, that, that's being uh, accused of doing that, um, you can't play favorites and i think there there are favorites that are being played personally um it's it's uh <laughs> I, I think there's favorites being played um I, I i think that there's the same field is not being set up um for everybody equally i think that stuff gets shoved under the rug well, without getting um, without getting too much into the details i mean it sounds like just making sure the tor tournament organizers are yeah, our, our, vigilance our, needs to be. Or a little more vigilant. I think raised. that's that's the word I was digging for. Yeah, was maybe a little more vigilant. Um, but this is this is more than just you know one league or one tournament for sure. These these are problems that transcend that and that apply to all of us. Um. So so far, it seems like just the controller itself is is an avenue we've got to overcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I, I, back to that issue, I wonder if it shouldn't be easier to overcome in Overwatch just because there is so much more team strategy and composition and more game sense required that should transcend. I mean, it's how you input your movement only, only carries so far. I mean, we're not playing CSGO here. Mm -hmm. But... Now, what we could do to overcome that, I mean, that's just a perception thing. Now, uh, from a production standpoint, like, what are... I know this is... This is uh, uh, this hits really close to home for me just because part of, you know, I'm, part of what all three of us are trying to do is just elevate this whole scene through every, every opportunity we can, right? Um, mm -hmm. I put a, a, a tweet out there just that you know, it's why I think every tournament deserves, you know, clean looking graphics and, you know, the best casting we can put up there. Uh, and just an effort to show that it is important and to, and to tell these stories. And there are a lot of people, you know, in this scene working hard, but we somehow we've got to pull it all together. I feel like a lot has to do with the skill level. I know you can't, you can, it's hard to compare mouse and keyboard to controller but i feel like people want to see more high level stuff yeah i mean yeah it's true people definitely want to see more high level stuff but at the same time if you want to see more you know see that kind of stuff you got to put the money into it you know you got to definitely push that a lot harder um i it's it's something that i i have mixed feelings on because when you are in a you know con, con, uh, you know contenders for you know Overwatch League and whatnot, um, you have you know you have money that you're allowed for each of you know teams and whatnot. But at the same time, they're not re they don't the the contenders players still you know are treated pretty fairly and i i think that is a lot to do with how uh like lower tiers are perceived is they're not treated as fairly as the uh higher tiers um i feel like they get you know kind of shit on quite a bit more than uh the contenders teams no. So you're saying as far as tiers within the, the console scene? Yeah. Now, and are you... Do you think we, as a scene, should kind of open the doors more to the, the T1 through 3? 
so that they, they get more I, of a I limelight? Think, yeah, Do you think absolutely. that would help I, I Im- improve like, the overall professionalism, or is that honest, just going to highlight like lesser people... skilled play? Yeah. Um, so when I was in, um, you know, production and everything like that in streaming um, last season for CGL, more people watched tiers um, one, two, and three than they did four and five. That is a fact. I, any, that is a fact. You wanna, if you want to, go ahead, try and disprove me. But there is numbers. There is numbers it's proving that people preferred tiers, you know, one through three over four and five. So I think that has a lot to do with things as well. And that's uh, Ocean makes a, a similar point just as far as uh, – Improve the gameplay, you improve the viewership, you improve the marketability. I mean, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. Now, um, um, I think... Oh, I was just going to say, you know, we do, we still want to keep... I think one of the ways to dissuade smurfing is to give people a reason to move up. Um, it's there, though. I mean, well, so I think the tiers. one of the reasons is that is, uh, and I think it's, you know, pretty well known is that like, if you, the higher you move up, the more money you're eventually going to make. Right. You know, and not a lot of, um, orgs are doing that. What do you mean? Not not doing what? They're not uh, trying well, to I mean, pursue you know, the higher tiers? Are doing that. Yeah. Not a lot of tournaments are doing that at all. Is that a lot of them, you know, it's kind of what CGL is doing. Um, and I feel like they're moving into that direction. Is that eventually they're just going to um, make it so that only the top tiers are paid. So that's going to give people what they, you know, are looking for is, you know, the more, you know, the high, the better you do, the more you're going to get paid. And that's yep. pretty much it. So, um, not going to divulge too much into that. Um, but, but that is, yeah. I mean, that's essentially, I mean, there, we have to have some way, again, to, to persuade people not to smurf. If I don't it, know if there's an I don't know if there's an absolute answer to how you get people to not smurf because they're just saying, "Oh, I I deserve this," and this is whole entitlement bullshit culture that we live in. Right, right. But I mean, like, I mean, there just has to be a a reason, a good reason for your team to play in T four versus T three, or for your T three team to want to improve to get to that level to want to. To level up, so to speak. I don't know. Just a personal opinion on ways that it might. And I, again, I don't have a magic answer for that either. But some sort of reward and something to inspire people to move up, I think, would help a lot with the Smurf problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, absolutely. You have to. You have to incentivize them to go out of what they're doing. All right. So. Um. I think all all of these things are good points, but it does it does feel a little scattered. So how how can yeah. how can we bring together these ideas? Like what is, you know, everybody's got. Uh, you got to have an org willing to make the move. Um, so I know CGL loves to say that they're all focused on, um, Overwatch and everything like that, but in actuality they're not. No, I mean um, I think they've been very open on that that they're trying to to hit multiple games. Uh, so I know the MK11 tournament has gotten great you, viewership. Well, no, I mean, it's not that I can't talk, talk about it. And I, I mean, I will talk about it. Is that, do you see how much money they put into a single um, MK11 tournament? Do you right. see how much? Mo- most people are, you know, the fighting. Any, that's That's hard to compare, getting, though. Well, here's the, no, no. Here, here's my thing: is that people are getting like ten thousand dollars for a single tournament, and it's a single player that's getting it. Yep. 
And meanwhile, tier one of of Overwatch is getting 150 bucks. Yeah. And I mean, we we're, so we're in like a much longer a season too. Overwatch two. focused, um, or um, tournament, or I, I I don't know what you want to call them because they're not really a tournament because they do most many things. I I would say business org sponsor whatever you want to call it but for being focused on multiple games it's clear that they're more about viewership than uh uh doing anything else really well and i mean from a business standpoint there's a little bit of a of a chicken and an egg scenario going on there i mean the the fighting scene is very different from anything else the fighting scene is a very tight community they had Oh no, I, I completely agree. And they had people that un, were at least slated to compete in those tournaments that are, are big names on the circuit. Um and and was like Dragon and Tweety were both on their list. I mean those guys have you know have played in a lot of the Evos and I mean those those are big names on the fighting game circuit. Yeah. Um and I think with that, you know, you've got you're gonna have to get sponsorships in order to get these kind of big dollar payouts. And in order to get those sponsorships, you've got to prove that you have good visibility, good viewership, good reach. So, I mean, there is a little bit of a chicken and an egg scenario here. Now, I, I agree with the original sentiment that better prize pools and more significant rewards would definitely improve the, I think, at least the perception of our scene. I mean, what mm-hmm. what got Booga onto the front page of every news? It was the money he won. It had nothing to do with Fortnite. It was the money. So, and, and Much and Carrot is is chiming in here with a little bit of uh, and uh, just some details. He said it's not 10k to one person. It's a big pool for placements plus the finalists get sent to a major. So it does get distributed about the the finalists and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> Still, but how many how many finalists are there? Right, right. Hey, let's not get lost in the details on that. No, 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 no. I mean, no, no, no. So, I you think have four five finalists. Or... So you, you, so you're telling me that five, five uh, 10k gets split between uh, five finalists. I mean, it depends I on mean... whether it's top four, top eight, or top sixteen. I don't know exactly yeah. what's meant by finalists. Um, I mean, if you have five hundred people competing, the top sixteen are definitely final. You know, can can be considered finalists. Um. So I, oh, I, I I don't know the exact details, but I don't see to me I don't think that's relevant. I think what's relevant is to get that kind of cash reward, like to get that kind of prize pool in the console Overwatch scene. I mean, we're gonna have to get sponsors. We're gonna have to get oh, absolutely some bigger names paying attention to this. And so I don't disagree. I think I think your point is one hundred percent valid. Bigger prize pools, we're gonna get more eyes. We're gonna get more viewers. That's gonna elevate the the reputation. Yeah, the only thing is, is finding that sponsor. I mean, and how do you like, get that sponsor oh, without already sponsor having those viewers? No named org or tournament. Ah, you know, why, why do now, I want to do that? That's, now we're getting some nitty gritty. So how do we turn our scene into something that's not a no name, unheard of league or group of tournaments, and and actually put it in? You know, create it into something that we could get good sponsorships, where we could start seeing some real prize pools and and get some real attention. And I think yeah, that's no, that's where the million dollar that's, questions, and that's best part. Yes. And that's just from one side of things. I think that is that is a, go, a good question to explore, and that is just from a tournament organizer's point of view. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's finding that first, you know. It, it's 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 basically shattering the glass the glass ceiling you know yeah that's, that's no, it exactly absolutely what is. It is and I feel like once once that happens then the doors are gonna you know burst wide open and, and that's and that's know, exactly what my question is here I think that's the that's the heart of it all you hit the nail on the head it's it's bridging that gap um yeah and you know with the the recent we had what three um, pro people do VOD reviews for our community in recent memory in the past few weeks. So yeah. of, of course, um, Hexgram's doing the caster VOD review with me and Ocean, BHP with Chef Billy here, and then Jake doing a VOD review for Danny DeFito. Um, did a 
King's roadmap coming out of CCO. Ah! Thank you, narrator. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> That's um, payback. I noticed earlier, oh, uh, Bullskunk added you. What? <laughs> you were already on my list. That was a, you were in my uh, showing offline. Like, I clicked on it again, like, just to make sure. That's really weird, because I haven't appeared offline in I don't know how many years. Yeah, Xbox does weird things. But, um, it does. Back to my original point is, I mean, BHP came from console. And mm-hmm. and he didn't have anything bad to say. More of the you know his only point of view. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Billy. But was that you just have more opportunities of things to cast on PC? Not that it was necessarily exactly. any better, or at least from his perspective, from a caster's perspective as well. Um, right. And then, I mean, Hex said something very similar. Yeah, he did make a little jab at us about the 13 year olds in the cabins comment. But he did also open up saying that vast majority of your skill sets carry over and are the exact same. And uh, Jake had something similar to say. I mean, people, people in, you know, there were a thousand people in Jake's chat and most of them didn't know that we had console tournaments, you know, and they were, they were excited to hear about it. And they, you know, they, they wanted, they wanted to know when I was casting more, they wanted to know when we had more stuff going on as a scene. And I think that's part of it as well, where it's, I think a lot of it is perception, and it's not 100% shared at all. And if we can just do a little bit to bridge this gap and to get more knowledge out there, there are, I mean, talk about numbers, there are statistically more people playing on console than on PC, at least last I heard. This may have changed in the past few months as casual players have fallen off or whatever. But I've always heard that there are just more eyes and bodies playing console Overwatch than there are playing PC Overwatch. And I know for a fact that people like to identify with what's in their community. You, you know, if you can see somebody performing at just an absolute professional level, and you know he's using an Xbox controller, to me that's way more interesting. It feels way more at home and way more attainable than watching Hacksaw, you know, pull out the greatest Genji blades you've ever seen. Yeah, because all you have to do is mouse to where he wants to shoot. Mm-hmm. I think it takes so much more skill to work. You know, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten buttons to navigate. I, I, um, I'm, so I'm actually watching the comments as well um, as they're coming in, Bull Skunk. And, Carrot, you're absolutely right. Um, they they kind of have monopolized um, the console scene, so it's it's very difficult. Like if you want to hold a tournament, you gotta basically plan around CGL. Otherwise, nobody wants to take part in it. Like it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And that's yeah. No, exactly, exactly. I I completely agree. And that brings up another it... point. Um is we we do feel a little divided as a scene at times. And I think that's that's something that's not helping our cause. In yeah. Now, uh, I mean, 100%, I was not a part of CGL last year. I did not start casting and doing my thing until after CGL had ended, uh, at least mm-hmm. not on a tournament level. Um, but here's the thing is that, you know, through through the voices of the people... We came in contact with you, and I, if I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can speak for just about everybody. I think it's been an absolute blessing having a fresh face like yourself just come in, and it's like, oh, oh cool, I appreciate all that. right. Well, it's been it's you been know, exciting, it's, and yeah, I, I think we can absolutely elevate this scene. Uh, I think it's very, very attainable. Um, yeah. But I, you know, with that said, I don't know, you know, what the temperature of you know, the league was last year. You know, I was not, I was not personally involved with those happenings, so I haven't, I haven't participated in a, in a CGL year yet. Yeah. Or um, season. Geez. Or season. Yeah. 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 There yeah. you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm. It's so fun. It's such a good. It, and, and and to put all the negatives aside, you know, with the long break and everything, okay, because the long break has not helped the scene whatsoever. Um, but you know, she they they've kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit. 
um, with that. Um, it, it's such a good scene, though. That like that's like the main thing I want to put out there is like it's a really good scene. Yeah, uh, and and the games are good. The competition is good. Um, and I think. I think if we could get more awareness in of itself, I think it could be a a big step in the right direction. I don't know about a solution. I think that's probably too strong. But just more awareness. The more awareness we can get out there. Like I said, people in, in Jake's chat didn't even know we had tournaments on console. Didn't even know that was a thing. Didn't even know that was an option. Yeah. Uh, like I'm not even sure like if it's us not promoting enough, because I feel like we are. But who are we promoting to? No, I mean that's you're getting into business talk here. You know how do you how do you reach a new audience? How do you you know get that to people who aren't already part of the scene? You know it's like we can tell all of the teams that already played in the console scene that we're playing, but we're not really we're we're just getting tricklings of new people coming in from getting recruited and stuff and friends, and and it's been a, a very much of it seems like a word of mouth growth. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's got to be, I don't know, I don't know what the the solution would be, but there's got to be a way to get, I don't know, to get out there more. I think that could help. Just straight visibility, because we do have a we do have a wonderful community. There's a lot of amazing aspects to this community. I know it's <laughs> you see this you see this tweet thread, yeah. and it's easy to <laughs> to start getting really pessimistic, <laughs> but we we do have a wonderful community. I can tell you firsthand. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. No doubt about it. All right. So, from a tournament standpoint, we're looking at perhaps better reach, better promotion somehow, um, bigger prize pools, which would correlate with sponsors. But all of these things yeah. still, like, uh, we're talking chicken and egg scenario here, you know? How do how do you how do you attain any of those three? Like today, where we are right now, so that's that's a big question from them. Okay, now let's let's shift gears a little bit. Let's go back to the players, because I, I think this is this is a a tough pill to swallow, and I think it needs to be heard. But we have to start behaving like professionals. Like I don't know, no, I, I, I don't know any other oh way God, to say it. You're so right. We have to start behaving like professionals, and that I mean, mm -hmm. that means first and foremost respecting each other and respecting each other's time. I think those those are two big ones, uh, and and that's again coming from a caster standpoint. But we're all just gamers trying to get better at what we do. Like there shouldn't. Yeah. There shouldn't be, I mean, rivalry is good, animosity is toxic. Like, there's got to be, we, we can't have that. Uh, and I think just eliminating yeah. that uh, from from each of our individual mindsets. I mean, this isn't something, you can't play dad here too much and just be like, hey, you better behave. Like, that's not going to fucking work. I mean, like, each individual needs to take responsibility and accountability for the way they behave in these tournaments and with interacting with other teams and their captains. But that's yeah. that's easy to say from the outside. <laughs> I mean, it's um, do you have anything at all? I mean, like with scrims, I know um, scrims got brought up quite a bit here with ocean. Scr uh, oh gosh, scrims. I well, here's another thing: is that there? Okay, so in OWL, scrims are uh, league monitored, right? Correct. In CGL, or in any tournament, for that fact, not just CGL, but any single tournament, they're not. Like, they're like, oh, oh, that someone blew you off? Up, oh, oh, well, okay. Whatever. You know, they're it, it, absolutely just like, they people just don't care. Right. I know, that's, I mean, that's a... I think that's a little bit of an unfair blanket statement, but I, I can see your point. Well, no, I, I, I've been in, I don't know how many uh, tournaments, it's, and I've been in numerous, numerous scrims. Someone doesn't show up. 
there's literally zero accountability. Um, yep. I've, I, I will say this. I have been in um, a um, scrim uh, Discord server where they are like, oh, if someone backs out on you, tell us. They're going to get, you know, not blacklisted, but they're going to be put on a list where, you know, if it keeps happening, they're just, you know, people know not to scrim with them. And I think that should be, you know, taken more, you know, I think there should be more accountability. That's, that's, that's another thing is I definitely think there should be more accountability. Do we, accountability. do we need a master list? Do we need some kind of, like, what if there was a public website, you know, that's almost, you know, how OWL released their, their band list or whatever, their disciplinary list? Yeah. I mean, do, do we have do we have a website or a master list for CGL or console scene? Really, I didn't mean CGL in particular, but the console scene as a whole. Um, yeah. And and you could go out there and make reports. I mean, and maybe this is something that would hold everybody accountable. If it's, you know, it's kind of the, it's almost like a, a Bitcoin mentality where you have a bunch of little different pieces all verifying from different angles and different perspectives where nobody has an agenda then everybody's going to be held more accountable and things that th would yeah. theoretically be more accurate. Um, and and then, then you have, you know, captains can pipe in and say, hey, you know, we've, we've scheduled whatever, and they, they were disrespectful about it. They didn't show up. They didn't behave, whatever. And if you see, I'm almost like a, an Angie's list or something. You know, if you see six different captains saying, don't scrim this team. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely think there need there needs to be something like that. There needs to be a master list. Like teams need to, organizations need to be held accountable. You know, if if you're gonna constantly just do that to you know just for you know S's and G's, you should not be allowed to participate in anything. Yeah. Like there's there's no reason for it. You know? at, the, at the very least, then other captains would be informed into what they're getting into. At the very least. Uh, Carrot makes yeah. an interesting point here, saying if we want more professionalism, we need to do buy-in tourneys. Um, we're um, uh, paying... Hold on, let me finish, let so me finish. Hold on, hold your thought, hold your thought, hold your thought. Um, yep. So if we want more professionalism, we need to do buy-in tourneys. Obviously, just referring to, you know, paying paying to get in, paying a, uh, some sort of tuition to get into the tourney. Uh, that way people will be... Excuse me. That way, people who care will be there. People that don't won't be. <laughs> people that don't care won't be in the tournament, and then there will be bigger prize pools. Uh, it'll also let orgs grow since teams will want to support from a parent figure. Uh, it's an interesting thought. Uh, I would be concerned that once you start adding that kind of stuff, you start bringing in. We got to make sure that the aforementioned things are in place to hold people accountable. Before we get into that, I think in order to keep it legitimate, in order to keep people from cheating, sandbagging, doing all of the things that people already complain about in spades, simply for money. Uh, Ryder, what are your thoughts? So I've been a big, big, big advocate of uh, paying for, you know, to be in a tournament. I've been a big advocate for that. Um, I've been told by uh, certain people that, you know, you can't have, you know, make people pay. Well, I'm not trying to make anybody pay, but if you want to be in this tournament, you're going to need to pay. Um, there, I, I've heard that there's been legal issues and stuff like that, but I, from from my standpoint, I don't think there is. Um, basically, if you're paying to play, it's just like any other game. You know, Overwatch is a pay. You know, um, Overwatch from a certain standpoint is a pay-to-play game. If you want loot boxes. You know, either you grind for them or you pay for them. Um, but as I've far never as paid for a single loot box. I, Same. I, 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 I don't want to talk about it. I, I, <laughs> I, I did. I'm sorry, but it was the anniversary edition, the first one, and I'm like, oh man, I need like all of this stuff. I understand. All uh, of it. I did. I did. Um, I did pay for the Winston um, skin. Exactly. So the London paid, skin. Yeah. You paid for something. I did. I did. Um, I did. Well, so after after fourteen hundred hours, I wanted I wanted the Winston skin. <laughs> so another reason paying to play is a huge, huge thing. Then teams won't drop out. 
how many tournaments do you go in where a team just drops out? Well, and not only that, but how much more careful would team captains be about getting banned, about getting kicked, about having these exactly. kind of issues? If you lose a deposit, then you're you're yeah, you're not getting that back. You're not getting that money back. Yeah, then I'd say you are more likely to want to stay in, which would you know keep people legit, and I at mean, least to some degree. How, how much money though? Here, here's here's my thing though: is how much money. Is it going to take for people to say, oh, well, I actually care? Because it, it's not going to be a dollar. If you pay a dollar, oh, yeah, here's a dollar. Well, yeah, whatever. I took it out of my mom's purse. No. You need it, – It's. I'm telling you right now is if it's not $20 or more, and I'm saying this per person, not per team. It's per person. You're not going to get anybody who's, you know, oh, no, first you, off. That's, you, a, that's a big amount to ask people. But also, it's that's the right amount. If you want to go ahead and you know disprove me on that, go for it. But that right there, that's that is the line where people are like, oh well, I don't want to lose twenty bucks. Um, I, I you know maybe fifteen, maybe fifteen. I disagree. But I think twenty dollars. I don't want to get too lost in the details here, but I mm-hmm. I disagree with that. It should be on an individual basis. I do think it should be on a team basis because I think hierarchy is is a part of what could help organize and elevate our scene is so ha- is if, having good hierarchy and having good if your captains are responsibly monitoring and taking care of their team then that uh-huh. that should be it's, it's it's like it should be on the captain to keep the team in line it should be on the org to keep the captain in line and it should be on the the league as a whole to keep the org so, in line I mean, it, there's got to be my... some sort of dissemination of responsibility there. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with CGL trying to keep every individual in line who's paid their $20. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. And, but here's my thing is that a, a, a captain should definitely you know, be held more accountable for all their actions. Yep. Um, I agree with know, that 100%. It's, it's 100%. You know, you're the captain for a reason. You're the leader. Well, if you're messing up... You know, then then something, you know, you're doing something wrong. Well, your and if you're messing up, yeah, if your team's messing you know? up, that's on you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you are recruiting people who are purposely going out and you know, being you know what and doing whatever the heck they want, posting every, you know, trying to start drama on Twitter, start trying to start drama, you know, in you know chats and Discord chats, you know, get rid of them. You have that power. You're a captain for a reason. Just get rid of them. You don't need that kind of stress in your life. Carrot, uh, Carrot also adds that people would take scrims more seriously as well, and I agree with that 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So here, yes. here's my biggest thing about scrims. There's no reason for teabagging at all on a scrim. In a game, sure, whatever. In a game, you're trying to get in your opponent's head, right? You're trying to mind screw them. Teabagging is a part of that. Um, spraying and voice lights, if you... I swear to God, if anybody like, if you're just using one voice line here, then that's fine. That's part of the game. But if you're constantly spamming a voice line, first off, you're gonna ruin the stream if it's being casted, and you're just being annoying to your entire team. I don't yep. care what anybody says. Um, and yeah, you're you're not Mickey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Mickey's charming Stop. enough to where he can get away with it, but Scrims he's probably the only person on the planet. Most people think, oh, I have to win a scrim. No, you don't. Guess what? What is a scrim going to get you? Absolutely nothing. Well, that's... Except for intel on the enemy team. Well, that's why okay? scrim bucks have become such a running joke and owl. Yeah. So, another thing about scrims is they're there for practice. It is a practice. Don't be a jerk in a practice. You're trying to synergize with your team. You're trying out new strategies. It, you're not there to, you know, be a jerk to an enemy team. Right. No, no you're there to help if each you're other. If you're a jerk to an enemy team, who's going to want to scrim you anymore? Right. Nobody. And that's where we're coming back to a, an accountability page. I mean, if that stuff, all that stuff gets posted, you know, maybe it helps. Exactly. It, you know, every people say that all pub, all publicity is good publicity. It's not. Yes, bad publicity gets you out there, but at what cost? You know, 
Um, I would say, you know, a lot of people don't want to face Dallas Fuel right now in OWO. Why? Because they're not that good. Um, I, I've I've what are seen you reports about? where people are. I've seen reports where people are just, you know, teams are just like straight. Up, Sorry, I don't want to play Dallas. You know, we want an actual challenge. Okay. I, I didn't um, see any of those reports. I know that there were... Um, San Francisco Shock was complaining that Dallas didn't, like, overly accommodate them, but mm-hmm. Dallas provided all the stuff they were supposed to provide that was required by the league that's mandated for everybody. Uh, I, I, but I didn't hear anything about teams yeah, not wanting to yeah, play Dallas. I think Ocean was the one who told me about it. Um, for the record, Dallas looked sick yesterday. Dallas looked absolutely sick yesterday. So maybe I one hundred percent don't believe that people didn't want to play him because <laughs> they were too shitty. That's I I one hundred percent do not buy that. But the other my, my, my main point of this is that you know, treat people with respect, you're gonna get respect back. You know, it's literally the golden rule that you were all taught in first grade and kindergarten. Treat people how you want to be treated. And I think that if people actually start doing that, console is going to get a lot more respect. Uh, I think it's a good start. You know, start there, and then eventually we're going to work our way towards getting, you know, uh, you know, sponsors and stuff like that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. You know, you're not going to get sponsors unless it's going to be self-funded right now. I mean, it's just going to take time, and it's going to start small. Uh, back to the previous yeah. point, uh, Disaro said only on day two, and that's that's very true. Uh, day one, Dallas looked like shit, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, and then Carrot did actually confirm that Fuel and Boston have been blacklisted by many Owl teams. So I sit corrected on that one. Apparently, you are correct on that. <laughs> oh, Carrot actually proving me right. What is this world coming?